What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing a very chill couch vibe fitness q and I posted this photo on Instagram the other day and asked you guys for your top fitness questions and I got so many. So today we're gonna delve into those questions. I'm gonna answer them the best I can, give you guys some tips, some tricks. Really hope you guys enjoy this video. If you do, make sure you let me know in the comments below or let me know what you wanna see next. Don't forget to subscribe, give the video a thumbs up. Let's do it. Our first question is, how do you balance your diet on days you want to go out and drink alcohol? I have a hard time staying within my calories on days where I drink more and I notice it bloats me pretty bad. Okay, alcohol is a pretty common question when it comes to fitness. To put it bluntly, alcohol is a lot of empty calories. It doesn't really give you any nutrients that you need, doesn't make you feel good, and it has a lot of calories. But there are definitely ways of incorporating alcohol when you're socializing, when you're having a cheat meal, when you have a birthday party, you can definitely incorporate these drinks without overdoing it. So I would say one of the healthiest forms of alcohol is red wine. That is usually what Greg and I will drink on date night. Another healthier alcohol is tequila. Be a bit careful with tequila, you know what can happen. I believe tequila is considered keto. It doesn't have a lot of carbs in it. What I would avoid is super sugary drinks fruit juice mixed with vodka, coke mixed with vodka, cocktails. Those all have a lot of like hidden calories and also alcohol in large consumption isn't that good for you. I used to drink a lot in college. I went through a bit of a wild phase. I felt really gross most of the time. So now I really don't love drinking that much. I probably drink about once a week and then I probably have like one glass of wine. Our next question is, did you ever have loose skin? Love you so much, these guides have changed my life. Very, very happy to hear that. I get asked about loose skin like every hour, I feel like I see a message pop up about loose skin. I didn't. Um, I'm not sure if it was because I wasn't overweight my whole life. I was overweight for maybe a year. And I'm also young. Um, this happened to me when I was 22, 23. So I really didn't experience any loose skin. I have stretch marks like on my thighs and hips, but I've always had those just from like puberty and like growing and whatever. But no, I have never experienced loose skin. The other day you said you make your bad days better by listening to motivational audiobooks or podcasts. Can you share those? Some of my favorites, I've said this before, are Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins, which is an audiobook about his life. I love watching Ryan Serhant on YouTube and I really like Physique Science Radio by Lane Norton. Next question, how do you eat so good on vacation? How do you work out on vacation, etc.? I do not diet or work out on vacation. A big part of traveling for me is the food. Greg and I love to eat. Whenever we go to a different country, we love trying different food. But one thing I hate is when I overeat and then I feel gross and my mood is bad and it slows me down. So what I prefer to do is just like have small amounts of lots of things. So I get to try everything. I did work out like once or twice in the 10 days we were in Switzerland on our last trip. And the only reason I did that was literally to build up an appetite and to boost my mood. It's absolutely not aesthetic in any way. I think vacations are to be enjoyed and to enjoy the culture that you're in. And I think focusing on a diet or working out could potentially ruin that experience for you. So I don't do that. How should I figure out how much I should be eating and what my macro breakdown should be feeling lost? This question pops up all the time and I completely understand why. It's definitely very confusing. Macros are different for every body, meaning different for everyone and everybody. It has a lot to do with your metabolism, your size, and your diet history. 
Figuring out how much you should be eating depends a lot on your goals. Are your goals to increase muscle mass? Are your goals to lose fat? Are your goals to maintain your current body weight? So first of all, figure out what your goal is. Then you need to download My Fitness Pal or some other food tracking app and figure out how much you're eating on average. If you currently don't know how much you're consuming on a daily basis, then that's the first issue. We need to figure out on average how many calories you're eating and what your body is doing in response to that. So what it really takes is some trial and error. Playing around with those numbers, playing around with the amount of food you're eating, what types of food you're eating, and seeing how your body reacts. How heavy did you start lifting at the beginning of your journey? I'm about the same size as you back then, and I'm not sure how heavy I should start off with. I think there is a big misconception that beginners think that they should imitate the amount of weight that they see someone else doing. The amount of weight that you lift is completely dependent on you and your strength. So me telling you you should lift a certain amount would just be ridiculous. I will say, based on where I started and where I am now, I lift a lot heavier now than I did back then. I started out, you know, doing weights that felt comfortable and safe. My one tip is always that you should be failing on your last rep. So let's say you're doing 15 reps of 10 pounds. By the 15th rep, it should be almost impossible to lift that weight. Um, you really need to be fatiguing your body to see the progress you want. As you keep doing that, you should be increasing that weight. You never ever wanna stay at the same weight. The goal is always to increase the weight because if you stay the same and keep it easy for yourself, your body won't change. Definitely strive to get stronger and stronger. The next question is, do you eat less on days where you don't work out, aka rest days? I eat the exact same amount on rest days. I don't really think you need to adjust. The point of a rest day is to give your body rest, give it the nutrients it needs. So the last thing you wanna do is like hold back food. You need to be recovering and building up that muscle. The next question is, do you have any substitutes for squats if you have bad knees? I see this question a lot. Um, in terms of injuries, I don't really like to give advice because I'm not a doctor and I shouldn't be advising you on something that I don't know how it feels. However, for me, I had a hip impingement about a year or so ago and it completely like stopped me from squatting and I was really upset about it and I thought that my progress would be out the window. What I did was shift my focus to hip thrusts and that changed everything for me. I am super, super quad dominant, so the front of me is really dominant and I really wanted to work on my glute strength and appearance. Hip thrusts have helped me strengthen my glutes so, so much, which in turn helped me fix my injury. Because I was relying so much on my quad strength, my glutes weren't pulling up the weight. And now that I have strong glutes, I'm able to squat again and my hip injury is not coming back. So so if you cannot squat, I would really focus on hip thrusts. They changed my whole appearance and strength. Next question is, is it better to work out in the morning or the evening? There is no best time to work out. The best time to work out is the time that fits in your schedule. If you are pushing yourself to work out at a time that doesn't work for you and doesn't feel right and you can't fit it in sustainably, then you're not gonna keep going at that time. We wanna pick a time that works for you, makes you feel your best and fits in your schedule so you're more likely to keep going. Consistency is everything. I have a lot of questions here asking me how to reduce fat on your thighs and stomach. Let's just say this right now. It is impossible to target fat loss. You cannot pick an area on your body and say, I'm going to lose fat just on my stomach. I'm going to lose fat just on my thighs. It doesn't work that way. A lot of scammy, weird fitness places will tell you that ab or stomach exercises are reducing the fat on your stomach and that's not factual at all. All you're doing is strengthening the ab muscle itself under the fat. If you have fat over your muscle, that's not gonna go away. You need to be losing fat overall. Someone said EAAs versus BCAAs. You guys know I get heated about this topic. As you guys know, I have a supplement company named Bloom Nutrition and we just sell EAAs. EAAs are essential amino acids, BCAAs are branch chain amino acids. EAAs are backed by science and proven to help with recovery results, cognitive function, metabolism, sleep, overall health. 
BCAAs are proven to do absolutely nothing. They have no science behind them, and if anything, they've been shown to have negative effects on protein muscle synthesis. So why do a lot of supplement companies sell BCAAs? Because they are cheaper to manufacture than EAAs, and a lot of supplement companies, unfortunately, like to cheap out on you guys. BCAAs don't do anything and that is why we don't sell them. Our next question is what are your favorite shoes for leg day? My favorite shoes for leg day are Metcons. Nike Metcons are designed for weightlifting. They have like a nice flat heel, perfect for pushing through the heel. You want a flat bottom shoe for leg day. Another shoe option is Converse and then the other option is to just go barefoot because you want to be as flat as possible so you can push through that heel. The next question is, did you do the same exercises when you were first losing weight as you're doing now? Yes! I learned to weightlift from Greg, so Greg loves compound free weight movements. So right off the bat I was learning squats, leg press, overhead press, side laterals, RDLs, all the free weight heavy movements. Those are really what have changed my body, so I continue doing them. Okay guys, I think I'm gonna end that Q&A here. I really hope it was helpful. Let me know if you have any additional questions. I would love to help you guys. So now for the rest of this video, I am gonna show you guys a really, really cool experience I got to have in New York City just a couple of days ago. I really wanted to put it at the end of this video so I could have a little bit of fitness and a little bit of fashion. Keep watching if you wanna see what I got up to in New York. Hi guys. <laughs> For the first time ever, I'm actually starting this video at night. It's like 7 p.m. right now here in Colorado. Something very unexpected and crazy happened today. I got invited to New York Fashion Week. This has been a dream of mine since I was maybe 12. If you didn't know, I moved to New York at the age of 10 and me and my family used to explore Manhattan and we would see Fashion Week going on and I would look from afar and think, oh my gosh, that looks like the coolest thing ever. And since then, I've always really admired people with style, designers, fashion in general. I studied design and merchandising at Drexel and today I found out that I was invited to a fashion show. I am flying to JFK tonight, getting there at 6 a.m. and then going going straight to a fashion show and flying back the same night. This video is me going to fashion week. Let's do it. <laughs> Officially in New York City. I'm here at Greg's family's apartment with Diesel. If you don't know Diesel, this is Lulu's best friend. Hi, D. I got maybe two hours of sleep. It's like 8 a.m. right now. The show is at 12, so I'm gonna shower and we're gonna get dressed. So I'll show you my outfit when I'm ready. Okay, guys, I don't have too many mirrors in here, but I'm gonna show you what I can show you. This is our look. This little zebra top. These like suit pants I think you guys have seen me wear before. Curled my hair a little. You know, not too crazy, but like definitely trendier than normal. Thank God I had my stylist here. Right, Dee? I honestly don't really know what the dress code is for the show, so this is just like what I thought would be appropriate. We'll see. Wish me luck. I'm gonna head to Soho soon and I'll show you guys as much as I can of the actual show. So guys, I just got to the venue of where the show is and it was crazy. There was photographers everywhere. The most fashionable people I've ever seen. I had to get away for a second so I could vlog, but I'm gonna show you guys, it's insane. Mm -hmm. 